Hey guys, today I'm playing Imperial Struggle, which is a pretty new board game. Playing Imperial Struggle, which is a pretty new board game from GMT Games, designed by Ananda Gupta and Jason Matthews, who also made Twilight Struggle, the classic about the Cold War. This one is about the Second Hundred Years' War between Britain and France, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what the mechanics involve. Uh, this is really going to be more of a strategy walkthrough. I'm going to go ahead and play both sides. Now, there is some considerable uh, hidden information in this game. So if you look at the War of Spanish Succession here, which I've just drawn tiles for, obviously I can see what both sides have in the Central Europe or Queen Anne's War Theater. I'm going to pretend I can't do that and just add, make decisions for each side as if I didn't know the hidden information. It works pretty well, though it's not quite the same as playing uh, versus an opponent. All I've done so far is draw the War of the Spanish Succession tiles. To check those out again, uh, in a little more depth, Britain has drawn pretty good tiles, except for the Jacobite Rebellion, in which it's pre looking pretty weak. France uh, is maybe punching under its weight in Queen Anne's War and Central Europe, so it's going to want to shore up its position with the European um, alliances and maybe get some forts and squadrons in uh, North America to be in better footing with those wars. Queen Anne's War in particular can be very strong if you win an early if you win a big victory in that one. I'm gonna go ahead and deal today's uh, this turn's investment tiles. Okay. Now I noticed that there's only two major investments for military, four for Diplo and three for Econ, which is probably gonna set the uh, tone for things. Also, there's no econ, there's no military event possibility. So, I'm betting those military event tiles are, and military investment tiles are going to go pretty fast. Uh, going to go ahead and draw for England, uh, for France first, and decide what their minister cards are. We have cards for mercantilism, War of Jenkins Ear, another mercantilism, uh, in addition to Chronatic War, and tropical diseases. Now. War of Jenkins Ear isn't happening because there is no military event on here. Carnatic War could be a very good one. Um, you know what I forgot to do so far is actually draw the events, draw the awards and uh, the demand tiles, which actually make this, which are quite important for this. Okay, knew I was forgetting something. The demand tiles are spice cotton and sugar. The awards are one treaty point for Europe, one treaty point and a VP for North America, uh, one VP for Caribbean, and just a treaty point for India. So sugar is going to be two VP, cotton is going to be two VP and a TRP, while spice is going to be one VP minus a debt. These are all quite nice to have. So I would expect to see some significant competition for the cotton and sugar markets here in India. Uh, with this in mind, France will go ahead and decide its ministry cards. Now France, uh, let's see, could use this tropical diseases card to get rid of two English markets, two British markets, and one French market. So those British markets would be the, the uh, tobacco and sugar and the French would have to get rid of one of theirs, one of their sugar. Not too bad. Um, so I think scholarship is going to happen for France. That also means the court of the Sun King will be available. The style is going to help in the, which one is it, Jacobite Rebellion. And the award for VP is worth extra, so you know it's all great for France, considering they're ahead in VP and they're ahead for countries in Europe. France is also going to take. I think we're going to go with New World Huge Notes. Um, that's going to let us do a really painful. Well, it's going to let us. Hmm. I was going to say that it's a great idea for Carnatic War, but Carnatic War is pretty good without even doing that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say 
Instead, maybe we should do, let's do John Law for um, finance. That can reduce your debt a little bit. And those wild actions are really nice to have. Uh, yeah, okay. So that's that's France's uh, ministry. Looking at Britain's here. Britain draws draws military spending overruns, which is not good as an opening card because there aren't any uh, squadrons or forts to kill. I guess there's the bonus war tile that they want to get rid of. It's really only good once the uh, British debt is... British available debt is higher than French available debt, though. Calico X is pretty good for Britain. Um, they not only get to unflag markets with two bucks worth of econ points, but they get to score cotton. Um, they're going to be trying to get cotton already, but if they were to play Calico X, they could use it to... Well, they would want to get rid. They would want to grab some cotton markets first, but then play Calico X. Okay, so Calico X as an opener wouldn't be great, but Calico X later might be good. That only really with more capitalism, though. Vatican politics uh, style is often good to have because it means a bonus on the Jacobites. Um, this one, Vatican politics, isn't great for Britain. That's even with a bonus that's only three Diplo, but. Eh, it's not so bad. Um, none of these cards are terrific draws for Britain, though. Britain might want to consider... Um, since military points are limited, I think Britain is going to go ahead and grab Edmund Haley. Uh, this military spending overruns card, by the way, is not going to happen because there's no econ event this turn. So Edmund Haley is scholarship and allows for uh, cheaper he allows for cheaper uh, squadrons once a turn and a squadron in Europe allows discarding an event card for one TRP so we'll probably discard this one military spending overruns uh, Vatican politics could be not bad to take because we're going to have a lot of Diplo this turn so we'll go ahead and do that Vatican politics is number two. France now has the decision to make about whether France wants to go first or second. Uh, in my opinion, unless there was something that France really wanted to grab on those investment tiles, it probably does make sense for France to go second. Uh, Yeah, it does make sense for France to go second because it lets them have a do something nasty on action round four that the British won't be able to react to. So British are going first. Now the British, uh, where well, the Vatican politics is good, um, two Diplo in German states, Prussia or Dutch. So that's pretty good. Uh, they are going to want to, I think, grab... Well, the choice is really military or something else, isn't it? Because military would let them... Yeah. I think that's what they got to do, is go for military here. So, they go for four military and... Why don't we do four military and two Diplo? British invest in that. Uh, two of those militaries will be used with Jonathan uh, um, Edmund Halley. So two military used to build a squadron. And I do like starting uh, Britain off pretty fast into the squadron race. I mean, it seems like if you can grab Asiento and Gibraltar and just kind of spam the squadrons, it's pretty hard to answer. Um, let me go ahead and get rid of these 
Spanish flags. We're not playing with that variant. So they spent two military on more squadrons. Uh, let's go ahead and start throwing those squadrons around places. So, um... They're helpful in Europe, certainly. And I think I'm going to go ahead and spend the remaining two on placing these in Biscay and the Balearic Islands. And I'm also going to go ahead and send one to uh, uh, the Huli River. That's going to put me into one debt. Previously, I've, I've taken debt really liberally, and I find this, this hurts more than it helps, so... I'm trying to leave a debt window, uh, a few available debt, uh, as kind of a cushion. We'll see how that works out. Um, now, I have two Diplo here. I could go ahead and reveal Jonathan Swift. Uh, I don't actually... Yeah, I do, I do. I want to go ahead and reveal Jonathan Swift, uh, and I'll spend two using Swift's ability to flag um, the Irish prestige space. Now, this has me doing really well in Europe now uh, for, for Britain. Uh, Britain is up six flags to four in Europe and four prestige to one. So that's pretty painful for France to just ignore, but they could... I guess they could just take it on the chin this time. Um, speaking of which... France, as we know, really wants to get uh, Scottish spaces to help reduce their debt. They really want to win in Europe in general, and they want to win certain spaces like the Dutch Republic and uh, German states that are going to help them a lot, and so on. So what are they going to do? War of Jenkins. In India, we have... Um, We have Carnatic War handy. I'd, I'd really love to play this and do some damage with it. Um, so I think I'm going to take... Uh, now, this isn't any use before I have those alliances. So I'm going to go ahead and grab... Uh, I'm trying to think which one. If I want the... Uh, four Diplo and two Mill. Four Diplo, two Mill, and an event, which is a good idea because I could play the scholarship. Uh, and having the upgrade would be great too. So I'm going to go ahead and take French investment on two Diplo, two Econ, and event and um, upgrade. Go ahead and place Tropical Diseases. This is going to let me remove uh, one enemy, one friendly, and one enemy flag. And this is what I'll remove here. Um, gonna go ahead and remove this one, my one in Martinique, and the British one in Georgia. Putting me slightly ahead in the Caribbean. Uh, so now I want to go kind of nuts with the uh, local alliances. I think, um, I was thinking of grabbing all three local alliances in India. I don't think that makes as much sense because I'm going to, uh, I only have two enemy targets there. Actually, maybe it doesn't make sense just because, um, no, it makes sense because I want to, I want to mess up their, uh, their stuff in India. Yeah, okay. So, um, I'm going to take that upgrade. Uh, let's do the upgrade for Queen Anne's War. Uh, I get the debt, which is even, arguably even worse than the Ford upgrade. I'm trying to decide which is better or worse here. Probably the British will, um, well, actually, that's a good question, if the British will. Uh, they're both pretty bad. Um, so, if the British don't put a squadron or fort in North America, then that's totally a waste, and if they... I guess I will make it the debt thing instead. 
They're both pretty bad tiles, though. Just to be clear. Uh, we've, we did the event. Um, we did the two econ. No, we didn't do the two econ yet. So with Francis two econ, they're going to... Uh, they're going to expand their spice infrastructure. And they're going to use... Take two debt. So they can take uh, four local alliances. Or four, four Diplo to spend on local alliances here. They'll buy first this one. Yeah. I just had a better idea. France is going to spend four Diplo on these local alliances, Denmark and Prussia. Uh, I mean, we're going to go nuts and take the Dutch Republic, too. So Denmark, Prussia, and Dutch, and that makes dip, debt rocket to four, and ignore what I said about how I'm not taking too much debt. Um, this puts Britain in an extremely obnoxious position, because France now has... Uh, the reduced debt by two thing, which is the best ability in the game, the best advantage in the game. So Britain pretty much has to take a major action, a major diplo action, or just eat that, which kind of stinks either way. Britain also is threatened by this Dutch Republic thing because that acts in two wars. It's it's not great for the uh, for the poor beleaguered British. Um, France also spent its two ducats, its two uh, econ on this here. So France is done. Britain is going to. Hmm. I think Britain will use. Uh, oh, well, they do have. Britain does have the possibility of getting the bonus on military spending overruns. Uh, no, they, they can't play that anyway, never mind. Um, in fact, what they're going to go ahead and do is... Um, yeah, I think they're going to go ahead and play Vatican politics with three Diplo, uh, two Econ, and an event. Wait, or anything they isn't there anything they really want to upgrade? Maybe that Jacobite Rebellion one. No, I don't think they'll uh wait, take their time on that. Okay, so um Ooh. Okay, so they have uh three Diplo Putting all this together makes six Diplo, but there's some restrictions on it. Um, so, and plus we have Swift, which is going to give us discounts on Scotland and Ireland. So, uh, Scotland, we flag for one. Scotland two. Scotland Prestige, that's a total of three so far. Uh, this says I have to spend it in Prussia and the Dutch Republic and stuff, so... That's um, five. And if I use, uh, if I discard military spending overruns using Halley, I get another treaty point. Okay. So, so far I've spent five, and I have one remaining. So, I'm going to take the Dutch Republic space. And that's going to cost me a treaty point. And then I'm going to take uh, two debt to also go after Denmark, Norway. I mean, it's either I take the debt or France gets to take two free moves. I don't know. It's pretty bad either way. Um, Let's see, and I also have that Halley ability, that, uh, no, I mean that um, Swift ability, which means if I control any spaces in Ireland, my minor Diplo actions can remove French flags in Europe, which is nice, but not super relevant right now. Um, so that takes care of this event. I also get two Econ. I could use that to expand my 
sugar or cotton or spice empires and I think what I might want to do is let's see so I'm equal to, so British and French are equal on spice but uh, but they have one more cotton in France. So what I'm going to do is, uh, France should have this. They should have this on their playmat. And uh, they don't get this anymore, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if I, if I put a marker a market here, they could put a conflict marker on it. But that'd be okay because I can still build an Ohio Forks and then I can get rid of the uh, conflict for one military point. So that's pretty good for me. Um, if France chooses this for military thing, then I probably won't be able to build an Ohio Forks, but that's the way it goes. And that's the French, uh, the British move. The French are now going to... Um, well, they'd still love to do that Carnatic War. So if the French do the Carnatic War, it lets them be really mean in India, which is good. The French Carnatic War would also have the effect of uh, damaging a fort or shifting a cotton market marker in or market in or addition to uh, the conflict markers. Which would be pretty good. And I mean, these conflict markers will come in handy for the War of the Austrian Secession, even though that's a ways off. Hmm. Although that also suggests that maybe I should hang on to Carnatic War for a while. But then that takes up space in my hand, so that's not a great idea. Okay, so the Austrians are going to, the French, not Austrians, are going to go ahead and. Uh... Okay, what France really wants is this 4 Diplo 2 Econ thing. They're going to use this to nail the uh, Marathas and uh, Nizam, which allows for one. This lets you put it in any Carnatic post market, so I guess Mysore is the one to get. So they're going to send these to the French playmat. Um. Let's go ahead and use the. For market advantage, uh, let's go ahead and use the advantage here to put a. Yeah, this will be annoying to clear. Um, put that there. We're also going to use two econ to expand. Um, let's see. So I feel like we've got. We've kind of got India wrapped up once we do the nasty thing we're about to do. Um, with two uh, econ, what else we can do is, you know, this stinks because we're really going to lose Europe really hard, but I don't know what I can do about it. I don't know if there's anything I should do about it. <laughs> All right, France is going to take, um, no, France is going to take eh. I'm going to say um Niagara this will put some pressure on the British to take Ohio Forks, which they probably will. Uh, no, France, French flag. Uh, but it might still be good because if if the French want to, if the British want to take Ohio Forks, that means well, they could take any of these and take one dead, I guess. We'll see. Okay, so what are the British going to do? 
The British would love to play Calico Acts, because they actually... Oh, wait, no, they wouldn't love to play Calico Acts. Um, I guess they can, but it's just basically... They're not going to take the bonus, because the bonus wouldn't be good for them. Looking forward to this war. Uh, Jacobite Rebellion is looking pretty bad for the uh, British. Um, they would really like to get into the Dutch Republic. No, they are, they're there. And they're, they're of Scotland and Ireland. I don't know. Uh, British can't really play any events they care about. France still too, has two events in hand, so I guess Britain would like to kind of try and get in the way by um, taking some of these event tiles. So I guess Britain will go ahead and take this one here. They will cast Calico Axe, though not invoking the... Um, Oh, wait, I don't have the bonus anyway, so that's fine. Calico Axe is going to be uh, two bucks to unflag something. Um, and the only one they have available is... Uh, the only ones they have available are in India. So it would either be the cotton market up here or the cotton market down here. I guess we'll do the one... Uh, down here because it's hard to break back into. I'm going to take a debt to make that happen. As for the upgrade, let's see if we can do better for Jacobite Rebellion. A little better, a little better. Going to remove the other one from the game. Uh, this is, however, going to be wasted. I don't know, they're both pretty lousy. I mean... Maybe the French will put some squadrons in there. Maybe maybe it'll be useful. Probably not, but, you know, who knows. Um, we have two Econ Major and two Diplo Minor. So we want to go in the defensive in... Uh, well, we're doing pretty dang well in Europe. Uh, maybe we can go with the offensive in Caribbean to do some damage there. Uh, I think it's a good idea. So we'll... Um, Clearing this conflict would be great, too. Let's see. I'm going to have some conflicts here, but they won't affect the conflict. They won't affect the upcoming uh, war. Uh, British, I think, are going to go ahead and use that two Diplo to grab the Iroquois here. That will let us drop a... Um, conflict on one of their markets and add a uh, advantage there. We're also going to go ahead and grab Okay, I'm spending the two uh, dollars on this strategical thing in St. Lucia. Yeah, St. Lucia makes the most sense. Okay, that brings it to even in the um, in the Caribbean and even on the sugar race. France is up. They would love to play Carnatic War, and I guess they will, using the only event they have left. That's going to lead to uh, playing Carnatic War is going to put two conflict markers on Oh, wait, I can shift a cotton market, which means take it for myself. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, so this puts France in a enviable position in India. Uh, the enemy is practically overrun with conflict markers. Keeping in mind that these Indian markets have not been... Indian market things have not been used. Uh... Probably the best move here seems like uh, getting Europe back under control. So I'm going to use the two. Um, I'm going to use the two diplo I have here, 
One is going to remove this Scottish guy, and another is going to make it French. That's going to add debt is going to go to five. Um, now, I will be able to reduce my debt by two at the end of the turn if I have Scotland on hand, so that's good. Um, I would love to take more debt and grab this one, but can't take that much debt. Now, France also has two uh, military. So the, the question here is whether to take like a fort or whether to take whether to take a fort, which means one point in a war, or whether to take a uh, bonus tile, which means more than one point, probably, but... Well, if I got one of these forts, I would have to uh, pay extra debt for it. So instead, I'm going to just take a um, French bonus tile in Queen... Well, actually, I'm doing pretty bad in a lot of these wars. Let's see if I can mess them up in uh, in the Jacobite Rebellion. Okay. Musketeers have joined the Jacobite Rebellion. British fourth action round. They, uh... They've used Haley already, both his abilities, and they wouldn't mind grabbing... I mean, they know they want Scotland and all that stuff. Um, but there's no... The only ones are major econ and major military. So, military might be the way to go here. Um, oh, and France gets to do their obnoxious closer stuff. Uh, they can do any of that? No. Britain can um, exhaust their advantage here to put a conflict on a fur market. I think what Britain's going to do is they're going to uh, they're going to put a fort here, the British fort here. That's three of their uh, monies. And then they'll spend... It's tempting to, to just try and aban think about abandoning um, India altogether, but I don't feel like I can afford to. I feel like that's that could be very bad. Um, so if we don't abandon India, I guess we could, instead of doing this, put the fort in Van de Vassai and then remove the conflict here. And they'll just put another conflict there. It's 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 really ugly. Okay, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna use one one uh to get this fort here. I'm gonna use one to sail this the other military point I have to sail this ship to um the Gulf of Maine. I think I forgot to actually click this one, but this is the one I, I chose: British investment. Uh, so the British investment is four mil and two uh, econ, not two uh, diplo. So the econ can be used to winning sugar. Kind of makes sense here. Uh, I'm certainly not about to win spices or cotton. So I'll go ahead and do that. Try and win sugar. France is up for the final round. Um, France is losing big in Britain, which is, you know, is not good. But uh, seems to have an opportunity to come back into winning in the Caribbean. Um, currently, they... Also, France doesn't have any spice yet. No, they do have spice. Never mind. So France is getting all the points here in India. That's great. Uh, France is getting... They can win in uh, Sugar if they use one of these. Um, 
but I'm worried about Queen Anne's war. So what I think France is going to do is maybe take Louisburg, or I could use the two. No, I think France is going to use take this one here. French investment will be four econ, two military. They are going to buy a. Boy, I could really blow it out on the Jacobite Rebellion here, it seems like, if I, uh, uh, because I have, France has, France and England both have style, it's known. Actually, this is, this is a secret still. Uh, actually, this is a secret still. Uh, no, wait, wasn't one of the style cards? It doesn't matter. Um, anyway, France still has, um, no, I use, I use scholarship as France. Anyway, um, France is up three. They don't know what this one is, but they have they have two out of three of the Dutch Republic in Ireland, so they're up four plus minus whatever um, minus whatever Britain does. So buying another could could mean getting up to five VP here, which is wonderful. Um, but Queen Anne's War is also pretty messy, and I think I'd really like to be victorious there. Eh. Queen Anne's War is probably going to be inconclusive because, well, Britain has one fort, one squadron, and one unknown tile. They have equal number of conflict squadrons. Uh, conflict markers. I'm going to go ahead and buy it for Central Europe, I think. Um, okay. De Tesse. De Tesse. So France uh, still has four econ. They're going to use that econ to expand in... Well, the options here are to expand in um, the fur markets to make this not happen, or to expand in... Yeah, I, I think they want to expand in uh, the Caribbean. Yeah, nice. They'll remove the flag here and make this French again. And that's four. Uh, maybe they want to remove this one, but also add this one over here to help expand into Cuba. Looks good to me. That's the end of the round. In Europe, uh, Britain wins with one t for one TRP. In India, France wins with one TRP. In uh, Caribbean, France wins, getting one VP. In North America, England wins, getting one VP and one TRP. There's also a prestige that Britain is really blowing out. Uh, they get two VP for that. Finally, we have sugar and cotton and spice to round out this turn. Uh, sugar is going to be, hold on, I think John Law goes first, doesn't it? Um, yeah, because that'd be like resolve remaining actions. So France re re reveals John Law and gets two less debt. That should have gone before scoring, but whatever. Sugar. France took the lead on that one, so that's two VP for France. Cotton uh, is a French dominated market. That's 2 VP and 1 TRP for France. France also gets spice from their 1 spice market to no non conflicted British price markets. So that's uh, 2 VP or 1 VP and 1 less debt. So this gives France a pretty significant advantage here. They have several more debt to blow through now, uh, which is bad for the British, but good for the French. As for the War of Spanish Succession, um, I'm not going to bother flipping these tiles. I think we can figure it out. Uh, France gets to send one fleet home to the Navy box, uh, and both are, they also get to add one debt to the um, British 
Then they're both at two, so it's at zero here. Austria is one to the one to the British. Bavaria zero. Denmark Norway unaligned. Dutch Republic one to the British. Uh, so that was zero zero one to the British. German states two to the British. Savoy unowned. So two to the British means the British win a marginal victory for two VP. Well, the loser, France, gets one treaty point. Spain, they're even. Uh, does anyone have governance? Nope. Sardinia unclaimed. Uh, Spain, that's one for France. And squadrons, that makes it equal. So, uh, no gain or loss in Spain. In Queen Anne's War, again, Britain must take some debt. Now, uh, the war tiles are that France, I mean, uh, Britain is up by one. Let's see, Queen Anne War, Queen Anne's War, both have one war tile, have one conflict marker. Uh, France has zero forts, while Britain has one, and France, Britain has one squadron. So that's one, two, three for Britain. Well, I guess four for Britain and one for France, uh, if you take in the conflict markers. Uh, and that makes one CP for... Um, for France, which which stinks for them, because that's one VP and one CP. That's a pretty significant uh, victory for um, uh, the first war in North America. You don't usually see that. What they're going to do with that is, uh, yeah, they're going to go ahead and take over Canada. So Britain is going to grab, what do you call it, Quebec and Montreal. Um... These conflict markers will also be removed, but this is interesting because it means that uh, Britain will have a big advantage in, Britain is going to now have a big advantage in North America. They're going to naturally kind of own the fur markets, and France can mainly mess around in fish land here without having... Yeah, they don't have any way back into this. That's really ugly for them. Uh, okay, well, stinks. Um, Queen Anne's War is complete with the British victory. In the Jacobite Rebellion, let's see, unfortunately, nothing good happens from this. Uh, the Jacobites are by three. Both the players have style, so French up by three. Dutch Republic puts it at two. But Ireland and Scotland put it at four. Four and then conflict markers, four. So that's that's ugly for the British. That's two VP. Uh, the British get one TRP, but now there's a Jacobite victory marker, and that's gonna mean easy points for the. Um, that's gonna mean easy points for the uh, Catholics if they can keep the Jacobite marker in the game. Okay, so uh, just going to finish this up by reshuffling the war tiles and dealing tiles for the next wrong order, dealing tiles for the next playthrough. Okay, coming up turn two we will face uh, 1714 through 1722 and it sure looks like uh, Britain is going to have the initiative, so uh, stay tuned.